first I want to thank you for this opportunity. Uh, since it's a very small group, let's do it very informally. I would really like for you to ask me any question, particularly uh, in the group we have somebody is waiting on the list. Hopefully, what I share with you is about how Southeast Asia handled this particularly I call organ transplant. And that will relate to the policy of the country, the law of the country, and uh, as far as I think one area I want to make ease to your mindset is, as an American, we generally think USA got the best. It's not true. It's really not true. Deloitte and Tush last year did a whole wide world, you know, hospital ranking. USA ranked 47 mm -hmm. out of the whole wide world. And even liver, USA survivor rate is, I mean, I have statistics, and that's done by our, you know, our uh, medical journal. We are not even on the top, and then we have a more than more than 10 to 15 percent gap compared to the number one country. So, so I think in general, and again, hopefully this is an information section, really, just to share my experience with you, and I, I really welcome you uh, raise any question uh, you have. Again, you know. I think there's a lot of myths, but my job, really, my company's mission is I make sure we partner with the most qualified hospital over there, and uh, we make sure the doctor is well trained. A lot of doctor is trained by both sides. Means they went to medical school, could be in Taiwan, in France, in UK, and they came here to do fellowship. And so, so the, in many ways, they combine. But I think a lot of doctors over there, that's my, my really two, three years, I generally spend two, three months within the hospital, watch their, we call hospital management, means hospital process. Let me give you another number. USA, we, don't, we, we only have 10% automated medical record. Means if you go to Mayo Clinic to be treated, your medical record is in Mayo Clinic. You want to go to Houston now to be treated. Let's just say in Houston, St. Luke. Guess what? Mail will give you a deck on paper. Carry it. They don't have what we call electronic. The whole that's not true. That's not true. Right, but, but they won't. No, 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 that's, no, no that's but they not won't. True. No, I, I understand, but they won't give it to, because you know why? St. Luke cannot receive it with the mail's electronic file. That's the reason, uh -huh. because each hospital cannot, they have their own, we call proprietary. Right. So, so means, and then, but Mayo, John Hopkins are the most advanced, and the Cleveland Clinic, and plus MD. Okay, most advanced in electronic, but, and the Methodist. Even that is only in their, we call their own firewall, under their umbrella. But when you go to China and Taiwan, guess what? Medical records share, and the Singapore, Hong Kong share among all the hospitals, all the hospitals. And so, so in many ways, we are very advanced, yet in many ways, we are very proprietary. That, I think that's the challenges. So uh, the business model really we focus is on patient. And I want to skip very, I mean, go real fast, mentally, the goal the key is we call strategic solution. Means hope the cost overseas is generally 20% of USA's cost on every single procedure. Doesn't matter from knee surgery to liver transplant to heart transplant to lung transplant. So basically It's 20% yeah. of the cost. That's that's like me. Let me start with knee replacement. Knee replacement here, medical procedure and the hospital stay generally average out 40,000. Some are 30, some are 50, so average out 40,000. 
In Taiwan, it's about 10,000. In India, it's about 8,000. In Singapore, it's about 12,000. In Thailand, it's about 11. So that gives you, then the recovery process, here we, we generally pay $150 per hour for phys physical therapy to help us. Over there is 30. And uh, like uh, Methodist in Houston, uh, the hospital stay per night, extra is $1,500 per night. Over there is about $200 to $300 per night. So those are the differences. And from a quality perspective, their hospital facility, there's no difference, because I've been to Mayo several times myself just to observe. Uh, from a, I call, if you use hotel, as a ranking, say five star hotel, their hospital ward is absolutely I call five star, and they give you nurse, and the nurse ratio is one to one, one nurse, one patient, particularly for foreign patient. So that just for your reference. And uh, we have office, you know, headquarters in Houston. Then Taipei, we have uh, our branch office, and. Uh, Pretty soon this year, most likely in June, we're going to have an office in Beijing. And those are the, the hospital we partner with. They generally specialize in organ transplant, cardiovascular surgery, orthopedic, and uh, cancer treatment. Some are obesity-related disease, means diabetes to stroke, particularly, and I will share with you you know, what area they are uh, strong on it. Now, I'll give you some landscape like healthcare industry leader by medical skill and hospital management. In the Southeast Asia, Singapore is number one. Taiwan is number two. Japan is number three. And that's being ranked by, you know, the Lauren Tush, a lot of those organizations. Organ transplant. China is very strong in stem cell. Most likely, either this year or next year, we will have several major breakthroughs in stem cell. That mainly their government policy allowed to do, and they've been uh, putting a lot of research and funding in that area for more than 10 years already. Uh, in all part world, because FDA still not quite uh, there yet. And uh, in Taiwan, liver, kidney, and bone marrow is really number one in the world. Now, Singapore overall ranking, they don't have one specialized area, they are number one, but overall ranking, they are the number 10 in the whole wide world. Actually, one year, two years ago, they were number six. They don't take our health insurance, right? Uh, no, I think, well, as long as our health insurance company willing to pay, it, it, it's more, it's our insurance company than, no. they take any form, but as long as insurance willing to pay. But won't, most insurance companies won't pay. Overseas. No, uh, depends, not necessary, unless they, they classify, and you know, recently I helped our, our patient talking to several insurance companies. Uh, you know, Blue Cross Blue Shield is independent in each state. Uh, Texas, no, no. <laughs> South Carolina, yes. So it's, there's a difference. Uh, yes. Right, then you mean that in South Carolina, the Blue Cross Blue Shield might pay for a procedure done in? Yes, they already promote it. I, I mean, see. South Carolina, it promote big time to send a patient overseas. Mm -hmm. So that's, but uh, Texas won't pay. Mm -hmm. And also depend if your insurance classify you as a, they call high risk patient, means you are high risk to travel, then they don't want to pay. Mm -hmm. So check with, the, with your insurance company. Mm -hmm. Yes? If, if a transplant over there costs 20% of what it costs here, mm -hmm. what is the cost of living? There. Is that also about 20% of what it is here? Some even lower. Some even lower. Some even lower. China is, is much, China, India is much lower right now. But then it depends on city. Like Shanghai, uh, it's very high. Beijing is very high. But then if you go one hour suburb of Shanghai, 
it can go down more than 50 percent. So it all depends. Okay. Uh, now, another area is really quality of life after procedure. Uh, Taiwan and China, you know, like I mentioned, is leading on that. We call CAM. Price leader: China, India, Taiwan. Means in, uh, China is the lowest. China, India, maybe a couple percentage differences. Taiwan is about 10 percent, and those are we call price leader. I just used liver transplant as an example. One year survival rate from Taiwan is 95. Look, I'm five years 91. And the United States is 80 and 60. Okay, this is last year's number. Europe, 78. EU is in general, but really more focus is German, uh, German, North Europe, and UK and France. So what's and the significance then? What are they doing that's so drastically different, or is that just hard to explain? Uh, no, there is a background for it. Why they why they are so ahead of it? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, liver liver disease. I think we all heard hepatitis A B C. Particular hepatitis A and B is so prevalent in Southeast Asia from the past 30 years up. Now it's getting better because we can, you know, have a vaccine to, to do it. So the last number I got is about the whole South, I mean the whole world has about 450, 450 million has hepatitis A, B, C. C is more sexual, and uh, you know, blood transfusion and relate to immune, you know, autoimmune. But AB, a lot of times through the food, through the utensil, so it has to do with the lifestyle over there. Uh, and because they have four, four, I mean, the whole wide world has 450, Southeast Asia has three quarter of that. And, and hepatitis, particular B, can dormant in your body. And the dormant generally is after 60 could turn into liver cancer. And but if you if you acquire that when you are in, you know, by like teenager, it can become acute. And that that requires transplant. So they have a lot of practice. Practically, they start this kind of treatment 30 years ago and the practice, practice, practice. And it just just accumulate experience. And because it was so prevalent in that part of the world, they have more training and uh, what do you call it? Mm -hmm. more focus specialized field. Mm -hmm. So that that's really and they, and uh, even today, you know, China now is more developed country. You have less, but a developing country, you usually you have you acquire that kind of hepatitis A and B much more high. I mean, higher percentage. And you're not driven by the uh, drug companies either to drug, 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 drug everybody. Yeah. Well, because if, if you look at in Asia, uh, only country really have any manufacturer or pharmaceutical is Japan. Most of the country they don't. Like particular China, I, I mentioned to JT earlier. China doesn't even spend that much. I mean, all the all the large pharmaceutical company now go to China. They all have uh, manufactured there, and because they can do easier clinical trial there, they get the mass of people to do it. Uh, and yet, the drug is cheaper over there. The same drug, I don't know all, but uh, I know some. Somehow, their their drug is like at least thirty to forty percent lower than what we pay here, but it's the same drug. Yeah, so, but they, they, I know some of the meds that I got are from China. And they, I think there's a couple of them that are from China, that, that are generics and that's, that's Right. Kind of so now they do, China does a lot of generic drug now. Uh, but then if it's generic, that's even, if you buy in China, even lower. Mm -hmm. Because I think 
uh, there, and, and the drug price lower has a lot to do with government policy mm -hmm. because they put a, uh, what do you call, ceiling to, to the drug companies and you cannot charge anything wow. more than that. And, and Japan is the same way. See, in South Asia, there's a, that's why I say you have to know their policy. It has a lot to do with government. Say, hey, this is related to people's health. So you want to make profit, but don't make that much. So they give them in the ceiling to do, OK? So uh, just let me you know, talk about a little bit law and regulation in that part of the world. Singapore, I think, I don't know how many of you know, Singapore just legalized organ can be purchased as, as a country. And I, I really, I fully support that because that makes you much more, I call, qualified sources. Because government will get involved and they are very, you know, the government is, if, if we get involved, I want to make sure everything is the right sourcing process. So I think when Singapore took the lead, some of the country will follow. Now, India, Philippines, China, legally should not be purchased. Legally, okay? Means you cannot say, Grace, I want to buy from you. If government find out, they will penalize me. But if I go to the hospital, say, hospital said, Grace, you know, so-and-so need it, would you, hospital, will cover that somehow can be acquired through the hospital. And that's my concern, that some poor family has to sell their child's life so I can have a new life. No, that. not not necessary, okay. But it does happen? Yes, it has a lot to do with the hospital identify the, they will work with the family, say, okay, we will help you, not say the poor child, it could be adult. But but you save them out of poverty. I'm not saying it's absolutely the case, but sometimes yes. And sometimes they will say, I, I want to be compensated. So hospital guarantee we will take care of you. If you, anything complication happens, you come to us. So it, it's that kind of arrangement. So you have to work with the hospital directly to get liver to be acquired. I would, I mean, that's what I call much more high, high road to, you know, to warrant the quality. I would not go to individual to get. Oh, I see what you're saying. You, you got, yes. If okay. you work with the hospital, right. the chances of you getting some, okay. Hospital warrant that. I see. So, and a hospital make sure, and a, a lot of time, I mean, just like any other country, no matter China, Taiwan, per se, it just no, okay? Taiwan government say, if we have liver donor, we have availability, number one, we got to give to our own people, cannot give to foreigner. Wow. Taiwan government just say, no, okay, no. Like here. No, uh, yeah, uh, and uh, here we we reserve a pool for foreigner, for whoever, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so, so that's what I'm saying. Uh, Taiwan, you can own. They would. They they are excellent on the scale. You have to bring your own donors. To how do you do that? Huh? Uh, uh, for a lot of liver transplant, how how do you swing that? I mean, it seems like the logistics would be impossible. You know, you bring a live donor. You know. Yeah, but the liver. If you take a liver away from someone, they're dead. No, you partial, partial. partial. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Oh. I was gonna say. Oh no, 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 <laughs> no, no partial. That's gonna be tricky. No, yeah. no, no. So, uh, we call live donor. You know, mm. it's a partial. Okay. Okay. So they they always say, I mean, like the the number one doctor I I talk to him quite frequently, Doctor Chen. Say last name as me. He said, if you can bring the donor to Taiwan. We would do it. Now, how about China? Do they do the whole organ transplant? Well, that's only happen if it's what do you call? It? They have a lot of prisoner. Now they have prisoners sign the agreement. They are willing to donate after they get executed. Mm -hmm. and, that's and that's the only organ that you uh, that you can get in China. Well, and also the family if they have you know accident, death, oh, okay. etc. Now. Right. 
I won't go into some now, now prison, prisoners wouldn't they be high drug users or something or no quality? no no, no. no. I mean, quality over care? there drug usage is very low people just don't do much I mean unless usually you know the prisoner over there is corruption it means you cheating government money they they get that sentence I joke around I say if it's made made off China he got executed the next day <laughs> I mean, without hearing <laughs> or anything. Maybe they should ship him over there. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I, what was that? Uh, so now in Taiwan, do do they do uh, cadaver liver transplants? No, it doesn't show. Ah. They say that that's the way. Now, now, the prisoner that's executed, you do that. See, Taiwan doesn't have that kind of prisoner, you know. Uh, 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 so where, did, where would is somebody that needs a liver transplant go? Generally, it's death, donation, you know, car accident, wherever death happened. Right, right. Yeah, right. they do. They do. They do. They do. Oh, yeah. What kind of a scoring system do they have? Do you have to be half dead to get a liver transplant? Or is their scoring system better? Yes. In, no, in, in general policy, they don't score like what, how we score, okay? They don't. They score based on each community, and they, they donate by community. Means, you know, I mean, let's just say Florida, and you, you compete with the Florida's availability. So let's say I needed a, a liver or a heart and um, I went to Japan or Beijing, wherever. But um, how would I get into that community? How would I be able to receive a transplant? Well, that's what uh, both, you would say. Yeah, or both government asked so me to So I'd become your sister-in-law. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Basically, we have to submit your, your application through the government. I see. Yeah, and particular China, particular China. In Taiwan, we only have two hospitals are government-owned hospital. In China, is ninety percent hospital are government-owned. Mm -hmm. So you got to go through the right process. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, this is kind of Japan actually has the highest demand, but got the lowest donor by number. And it has a lot to do with the culture. Japanese law don't allow kids to donate. Even say the kid died, the liver can donate. It's not allowed. Mm -hmm. So law prohibit. Now, in Japanese culture, and uh, or even Chinese culture, because a lot of Japanese culture came from China. Both culture just don't believe to die not in a complete peace. Mm. Means I miss I miss an organ. That's not complete. So my next life might not be a human if I don't have an organ. So in, in culture wise, there is younger generation is very different, but older generation is still under that family tradition. So in, in a way, and the Taiwan now is very aggressively promote that. China, I think you all know, two oh seven sign in, you know, with a. WTO, everything else, including this part, is they start to promote. But I think culture thing will take a long time to yeah, to generation. really overcome. Yeah, generation to overcome that mentality. Chris, is that a Buddhist uh, philosophy? In many ways, yes. But uh, well, Buddhists in general say, "What well, you do good, you will get reward in next life." So they they feel you are not doing well. I mean, you know, when you don't have a means, you are. Your parent generation didn't do good, so you have to give a you know. You're missing you, something. Yeah, you couldn't die in one piece. That's that's the. <laughs> I think I, this kind of just to share with you, you know, what our USA office do. Uh, I know, you know, going abroad for procedure is kind of, I call unease. Really, I mean, you know, oh, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. 
And, uh, but, we just, my company just started to do telemarketing two weeks ago, because I finally took three years on the ground to get everything set up, make sure all the hospital partner with us are, we call JCI accredited, Joint Commission International Meeting according to American standard, according to EU standard, all those hospitals are being certified. And this is certification from USA go down there to certify them. It's almost like our ISO 9000. So all the hospitals we select, all GCI credit. So finally, and then we have information system completely automated for our patient, pre, we call pre-care consulting, post-care, follow-up, et cetera, and we partner with caregiver company, you know, we can provide caregiver, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So I think that overall, medical, you know, procedure oversee is you make sure you work, you know, I mean, that's why I think company like ours is absolutely critical to ensure, understand what the patient's needs and the standard here and also facilitate the other side, make sure they work, you know, with the patient here to facilitate. I mean, we, my company even provide culture training. Hey, when you have an American patient, this is what you need to do. Because Chinese way is very different. Every hour on the hour they come to ask you, do you need anything? No, I already told you, I don't need it. Don't bother me, leave me alone. <laughs> so so I, I share with that, I say, you know, American people like to keep an arm distance with you. Don't go to bug them every hour on the hour. I mean, that just, they, they thought that called better service. Yeah. You know, so sometimes they are just overwhelmed. And uh, same thing, Chinese people think their food is the best of the world. So they feed you day in, day out Chinese food. I told them, when I go to China two weeks, the first thing I came back here, hamburger. <laughs> and they look at me, you eat that too? Because I'm usually pretty healthy. But you know, that's what you, you're, you are, what do you call, hungry for, or you have that craving to it. But, but over there, that's what the, the, the culture, you know, for patients going there, there is a challenge. But I think the last thing I want to assure you is, you don't need to worry about the skill. More worry about is I call the cultural difference. Is communicate, being able to communicate. Communicate, we, we will solve that problem because we will provide, we will bring people travel with you to go there. Yeah. Because that have to be. But generally they can communicate. But the communication is, even you and I, we speak the same language. You know, every single project in USA failed because what? Communication. And we speak the same language. It means I told you I want A. You think I just say it's A1. No, I want A, not A1. So communication means what they say and they take, you know, what you say, they take what they think you need based on their cultures. That's what the difference is. Okay? I mean, Language, but yeah, I mean, so. like, like when we say no, we means no. They say no, it doesn't mean no. So the, you know, the minute you, like, I always dreadful to go to their banquet. Because if you finish everything on your plate, they pour more, they think you like that dish. No, I'm done, please, I'm <laughs> done, I don't want any more. And that's the way, and then if you say, oh, that's delicious, they order, order another one for you to go. <laughs> <laughs> and we're just being polite, we say, oh, that's delicious, right? <laughs> I mean, that's how far the gap um, is. Yeah. So, so a lot of times, I think the, that's what I call patient experience. When you go there, it's a total experience. You want to, you know, feel I am safe, but, and also you are there alone. You might not have, you know, family support. So another thing is support system is very important. So those are all we call part of this patient experience is part of our offering is to consider how patient, you know. But there are many breakthrough. Right now, my like China can treat Parkinson's disease with stem cell, MS. Stroke, uh, there is a movie made by John, documentary movie, 
uh, just do a search called 9,000 needle. This guy had a stroke completely paralyzed, could not talk, could not, and the insurance ran out, you know, after discharge from the hospital, $100,000 allowances, you are done. Went to China, really got 9,000 needle from acupuncture. Mm -hmm. Now he, he can pull a walker and walk. So there, there really, an, another area, acupuncture, and this has been not clinical trial, but evidence-based, means we treat 100 patients and we got 80% successful rate, is reduce uh, your weight. What, what acupuncture can do is expedite your metabolism, speed up your metabolism. That's, but, but, cannot change your, your diet behavior. You know, I mean, I mean, you have to manage your diet, but surely you can, you know, speed up metabolism. That has a lot to do with it, because I, I can use my family as an example. Three of us take after my dad. No matter what we eat, we don't gain weight, and I'm one of it. Then three, uh, the other three took after my mom. My mom said, if she look at the water, she gain weight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so that's that's really is your metabolism different? You know, your DNA different. Um, as far as uh, let's say uh, someone from the United States goes over to China, has a liver transplant. How do they handle the transition, unless you plan on moving and staying in, in China, how do they handle the transition from going to your form of, of health care and medicine and transitioning it to Western medicine? How does that work? I mean, how do they? No, I think they maintain, like, like one of our patients, all the medicine he has, like this list of medicine. You continue to use whatever, unless the doctor over there advise you, I think you, you can reduce this dose. All the other herb medicine is only a complementary. Oh, okay. It's not so a replacement. Yeah, yeah. The and the, but after you, you, you have done your liver transplant, they will give you, they will recommend you, still up to you, you know, for the complementary type of a medicine, say to improve your immune to improve your energy, to cleansing your, you know, I mean, there's a lot of cleansing required, particular liver side. And that's why we have a lot of, we call rejection uh, treatment. So. Yeah. When you come back to the United States, are you covered by the U.S. physicians? Oh, you, you have to, yeah, yeah. So, so that's why our post care means we have to work with the doctor here, Dr. Ting say, okay, your procedure, you know, is done over there. Now follow up has to, so have to work with the doctor together. And okay. generally, when we have we call pre care consultation, we have doctor here talk to the doctor there, mm -hmm. and they will communicate that. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and I I truly have a mission to make sure this job can be done because we got a problem. We just have to solve. It. Mm -hmm. I mean, how much do your services cost? We just if we sign up with corporate, corporate pay us to do it, okay. But if you are paid for yourself, then we charge you just like we charge corporate per person. We charge two thousand dollars to manage all your affairs for a couple of period of time. I mean, from from you you start to become our client. We do your travel arrangement. We do your settlement. We do when you go there, we take care of you. All that. It's two thousand per case. Yeah, this is how we. But but the that's hospital. That, that's right. just a right. So what? Right. No. <laughs> 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 I mean, this is two thousand. So they chart we call administrative logistic. Yeah, that's what we do. But that's how uh, Exxon those company. You know, we 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 submit two proposals to large corporation right now. We already got set by one. So, but you know. But then, like you say, yes, you still have to pay airfare, I mean, hotel, and uh, like for liver, a lot of times we advise you to go there three months. If they find a candidate, cause they want, you know, when they do the surgery sure. within six hours. So you might want to go there to live there for a while, and then we will even help you arrange. Don't stay in the hotel because too expensive. So make sure we find you a housing and uh, close to all the surrounding. 
it, it, it's very critical because I myself travel so frequently. When I went to Indonesia, I was so scared. I was so scared. I said, the only country you travel in the year of 2008 and nine, right? You still have to put money in the passport and you can go through the line. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, yeah. But, you know, I mean, in a country you never know, they might put you in jail for whatever you do. You didn't, you, I mean, you would not even know. But I'm, I'm in a way, I'm exaggerating. But I understand that fear. Yeah. You know, I mean, I understand, but I mean, truly, even I look just like the Chinese when I walk in, you know, in Beijing, or I generally stay in JW Marriott. People would come to me and say, Oh, where are you from? I said, I'm from here. No, you're not. So, you know, I mean, they can tell. And it, it, sometimes it, there is a, I call, unease of the surrounding, you know, because that's not, not where. Even come to Jacksonville today, I was like, okay, should I rent a car or should I just call a taxi or should I, you know? But in Houston, I know every corner of Houston, mm -hmm. so so that's the differences. Mm -hmm. But uh, particularly when you are a patient, hopefully that experience is not only say, okay, will treat your disease, but at the same time, really gain a good experience of it, and that's really. We, we try to, I mean, I'm even working with the children. I want to bring a summer camp for the overweight kids to go there to understand their culture and why, you know, you don't see that kind of disease in that part of the world. I mean, uh, truly, it, it's very, somehow, this country, you know, we continue to develop, I call this, long-term disease out of our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And it, it's become a culture epidemic. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if you wanted obesity care, mm -hmm. how much would that cost? And how long would it take? Depend on what kind of, what do you call, procedure you want to take. Generally, is depend on how much, you know, it's a racial thing. If you overweight this much, and uh, what age, in what condition, with other health condition, you might want to have a gastric bypass first. And then you use acupuncture for follow-up treatment. But if you are just like say, I want to reduce, you know, I'm 30 pounds overweight, and then my BMI is, let's just say, 31. And maybe you can do and the acupuncture generally they would they they require six weeks continuously. Do they do plastic surgery over there? Excellent plastic surgery. Wow. Excellent plastic surgery. I'm saving my money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But wait, when I do it, you you come with me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now that uh, actually Taiwan, Dr. Chen. Another doctor is number one in the world, they call facial reconstruction, and he's a personal friend of mine. I told him, well, I do, I, I need you. But, um, you know, he... Remember does, who your friend is here. Yeah, <laughs> he does those complex ones, you know, I mean, uh, like that. Uh, that's another thing. USA, we, we are best in doing what? Marketing and sale. Mm -hmm. We are, I mean, we don't produce anything. Nike doesn't even make one pair of shoes, but they do marketing. Over there, they don't do any marketing. Their CEO doesn't want to be interviewed. Their CEO does not want to go on TV. So it, it's a culture different. And generally, over there, if they are rich, they want to kind of cover under the bank. They don't want anybody to know they are rich. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you see them walk on the street, you cannot tell who is rich, who is not rich. So, so that's it. it's a culture difference. That's why you never see anything get promoted here iPhone, iPad, iPad, it's all made by one second richest guy in Taiwan. Everything that I, I mean, everything is made there. You would think they could have sell their own, right? No. They continue to be happy to do that tier of marketing. Mm -hmm. So, so I think more or less it's more, I would say, but uh, just to give you why we need the local office there is really make sure 
the quality. And then we have our people monitor the hospital, make sure, because JCI, every three years, you have to be removed. So we would have people go in to spot check the hospital. And also, government relationship coordination is very important to make sure we maximize the quality. Uh, again, you know, IT technology, that's one of my backgrounds, so, and we do patient uh, survey back. So hopefully, you know, we can bring, I call better service, better value, and uh, quality, I think at the end of the day, quality is everything. Quality absolutely is everything. What happens if they mess up and you go over there? Well, right now, all the hospitals we have contract with, we have them uh, carry $1 million liability, if it's their That's really, I, I'll be honest with you, uh, you know, that's how they're ordered to do. But it's the same thing here. If they mess up yeah. here, everybody's scrambling to CYA their own behind. Mm -hmm. So, right. you know, oh, yeah. I, I don't see where there would be a difference as far as if a mistake is made, a mistake is going to be made. Oh, yeah. Well, hard being human. Right. My mom died here uh, bypass. She had six, but they only did five. They missed one. Ouch. Uh, so, so, what would you say then would be? Just a ballpark figure, let's say, not for a liver transplant, but let's say for a heart transplant. Because you're not going to be living there for, let's say, three months, right? For a heart transplant, you would go there, have a procedure, and come back. So from, with the payment of your services and the flight, you know, staying, lodging, and the cost of the operation, what's the ballpark figure? If I mean, no, you let me give it, you, okay. let's use liver first because okay. I know the numbers so yeah, well. Yeah, I was going to say that. Uh, yeah. You know, liver, how much is here, generally? 350,000. Okay. How much? 350,000. Over there, the most, the most, I give you the most. That's including your fare, all that, 150,000. Not including your room and board yet because room and board, I can live for 200, let's just say $200 a month over there. You might want to live in uh, Marriott or higher. Yeah. That would be a thousand. So I think that, so that, that will work. Really yeah. yeah, but uh, but the cost of living generally is low. Mm -hmm. I get, if you, if you don't eat American way, I mean like, okay, mm -hmm. when I was in Shanghai, I said, okay, I want to go to a French restaurant. That cost me just as much as here. You know, and uh, wine, if you want, you know, warm wine, it, it's pretty much the same. But if you rent a Vela and, uh, you know, do the, the local mm -hmm. diet, all that, it's nothing. And then you can hire a full-time servant to take care of you. It's still nothing because maybe $150 a month to do grocery, to you do You feel all a lot better, too. <laughs> yeah. So the so then the operation and the airfare and your services would would range about 150. No, I mean, uh, right, airfare, not including paying, you know, the organ person because the organ will be very. If you get a let's just say, uh, you get a 40 years old liver it might cost you more than you get a 50 years old, all different. So that and that. So far, range up to fifty thousand the most. So you about two hundred. Yeah, two hundred the most. Add up. Okay. Yeah, and but living three months, it's nothing compared. And that even airfare is business class. You don't go, you know, because if you go coach here, it's very, it's dirty. It's like a continental. You fly to Shanghai, eight hundred bucks from Houston, mm -hmm. all the way to Shanghai. But, you know. That's a long way on coach, though. <laughs> I know, I know, exactly. I mean, but, 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 you know, I generally fly with them uh, business class. Yeah. It's about three, four thousand dollars So you can't just go over, get your trace plane, and come home. Yeah. You can't do that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But over there, they, the, the doctor over there and the, or medical staff, here, you know, hospital discharge you, say, a week. Yeah. 
over there, they might want you to stay two weeks. They want to make sure you absolutely well to travel. So, I mean, uh, knee surgery over here, two days, they discharge you. Over there, they want you to stay one week. That's because they don't have the insurance companies pressure them. Right, exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. I mean, and then not only that, if you say, well, I don't like hospital, okay, you can stay at the hotel, but doctor wants you to come back to do the wow. hotel. Wow. Yeah. So, so are they still up to your option too? So that will lower your cost too. If you right. spend a whole lot of time. Yeah. Any other questions? That's very interesting. You learned a lot.